Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about a radiologic investigation of the lung. First of all, it's important to consider the methods that are possible to use for, ex for a lung investigation. That's first of all, of course, the conventional x-ray, in this case a chest x-ray, or also a fluoroscopy. That's kind of like an x-ray movie because you get continuous images of real time moving images. Then also a CT or computer tomography is possible to obtain. If you don't know how a CT works, you can click on the banner above me. There uh, my fiancé will explain you. There are also, also different variations of computer tomography. That's for example the high resolution CT, the CT angio and the chest CT. Other methods include uh, ultrasound and MRI, different nuclear methods and interventional methods. Then the next step is to consider the general description. So where are the lungs located? Are the lung borders correct? So is the anatomy as it should be? Is the shape correct? Do you have the lingula and the cardiac notch? Do you see the costophrenic angles? Things like that. Is the size correct? Is it hyperinflated, hypoinflated? Is the symmetry correct? Are both lobes approximately the same size? How is the density? Is it more opaque than it should be? How is the structure, the function? Function you won't be able to see in all of the different investigation methods, but if you can, it's important to consider. I want to talk more about the different shadows, different opacities and disorders, and we will just go through them one by one. So if you obtained an X-ray, and you see different opacities, so more white structures. They can be of different types. They can be nodular, meaning they're round. And you can even have a solitary, so only one a white spot in the lung or multiple. Then there are micronodular structures, where you have much smaller nodules. Or it can be patchy, so infiltrating basically the entire lung. X-ray shadows, so more black parts speak for infiltration of the airspace or cavity forming ring-like structures. Also sometimes you can see air fluid levels or different net formations or reticular formations or the entire lung can be homogeneously dense. This for example can be in atelectasis of the main bronchus or in a pneumothorax. And now I want to talk about the different distribution of the pathology. So basically where in the lung something can go wrong. So it can be an alveolar disease, an interstitial disease. Alveolar meaning that it occupies the air spaces at the end of the smallest bronchi. Interstitial meaning it's in between the alveoli, so basically in the supporting structures of the lung. And it can be nodular, as I said above, so that there's one small locus in the lung which is affected. It can be bronchial, so affecting the airway tree or the bronchial tree. Um, from the main bronchus or the trachea until the smaller structures. It can be obstructive, so that at some point somewhere air is trapped inside. It can be due to the bronchi, it can be due to the alveoli, or it can be mechanical. Other pathologies include pleural, so of the lining covering the lungs, mediastinal, so of the most medial space of the thorax, where the heart and the major blood vessels and those kind of structures are located. Or it can be the vasculature, that the blood vessels have some kind of disorder, which might be possible to see on an x-ray. Alveolar diseases are, for example, pneumonia, edema, infarction, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and many more. They usually appear with a ground glass appearance, meaning that the entire lung field, in most cases, but it can also be just a lobular pathology, will be more opaque, so will be more white. It looks like these ground glasses or milk glasses. Then consolidation can be visible. That is when also one lobe or the entire lung is in more white structures, but more densely than in the ground glass appearance. And in the air bronchogram, the bronchi are more visible due to the air being more visible inside and outside the bronchi so that they're more highlighted. 
Interstitial disorders are, for example, edema, congestion, fibrosis, pneumonia. And this will appear by thickened interstitial septa, thick perivascular and peribronchular spaces, curly B lines in the periphery of the lung, and honeycombing, so that there's thicker cavities basically with um, water structures around them where the interstitium is. The nodular diseases can be differentiated by their size and their location. So if the size is between 1 and 3 millimeters, we also say it's miliary. And that's, for example, tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, silico silicosis, and many more diseases. And the location can be, for example, centrilobular or peribronchovascular. And if it's up to 1 centimeter, it usually can indicate inflammation or metastasis. Then bronchial disorders are, for example, bronchiectasis, which will appear characteristically by their air bronchogram. Obstructive disorders are, for example, bronchial stenosis, bronchial obstruction, atelectasis in the case of a complete obstruction, or expiratory emphysema in the case of an incomplete obstruction. Different mediastinal disorders are, for example, lymph node disorders, tumors affecting the mediastinum, congenital abnormalities, aneurysms, everything that affects the most medial part of the thorax. That was just a quick overview just to structure the different diseases and um, methods and an approach on how you can investigate the lung. I hope it was helpful and uh, yeah, feel free to leave a comment under this video about something that you maybe would like to see or if you have any questions. And I would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much.